So lately, everyone and their mom has gotten Riley Reef trade fever. We got Riley Reef trade fever. It's good because the Field Yates uh, article sparked some interest in punting number 71, the former Iowa Hawkeye. And I, I was initially all for either trading or cutting Riley Reef earlier in the offseason, you know, but slowly accepting that he will be back, just given the conservative nature of the Vikings coaching staff and also the weirdness of the offseason. I mean, they haven't even met Ezra Cleveland in person yet, which is just absolutely insane right but say the vikings do rip the band-aid off you know they trade riley reef to the chargers for desmond king or whatever deal that they can come up with uh, or just straight cut him then what so there always has to be a plan before you take drastic steps right and it, you look at libya after they uh, topple momar Gaddafi, what was the plan they didn't really have a plan and now you see what happened right but this would be my perfect scenario it would be my dream come true because i think there would be a plan in place starting ezra cleveland and start his learning curve. Uh, yes, there will be some uh, bumps and bruises and growing pains and whatnot, but I think having the most athletic offensive tackle duo in the NFL as your primarily an outside zone scheme as well, uh, just them getting as many reps as possible together is never a bad thing. Uh, and also, just going forward, just having two beautiful pillars on that offensive line of just athletic athletitude. It would just be great, right? Also, it would free up a roster spot for sixth-round pick uh, Blake Brandell coming out of Oregon State, uh, potentially taking over as that swing tackle as well. Uh, I do like his potential long-term. Or Ole Udo steps up into that role. We're, uh, we're going to talk about tomorrow. I think Ole Udo should be considered uh, for one of the guard positions as well. But if they just have him strictly as a tackle and strictly as a right tackle, then I think that that could work as well. And if the Vikings punted on Riley Reef and freed up that $11 million in cap space, as well as got rid of Rashad Hill... I'm in. Also, with that cap space, could you make a play for Joe Thune? Where you know, the Patriots signing up Cam Newton, a minimal deal. They're still dead last in terms of cap space. But, you know, uh, since they lost a, a third-round pick uh, in 2021 because of the you know, uh, Spygate 2.0, maybe the Vikings can entice them. Hey, Joe Thune, we'll send you a three and a four. Let's do this. Let's go. So maybe that is the plan. And honestly, that, that would be absolutely perfect. So your starting uh, offensive line left to right would be Ezra Cleveland, Joe Thune, um, Garrett Bradbury, Drew Samia, and Brian O'Neill, as well as you add Desmond King to the secondary. <sighs> baby. Baby, baby, baby. Or if they don't go the Thune route, which you know is a bit of a pipe dream, you know, maybe they sign up a guy like Cordy Glenn or Jason Peters, and he can be the backup, a left tackle, and or compete for that left guard spot, which I would be fine with uh, as well. Absolutely fine. Uh, but left guard uh, is where the point sticks. Now, uh, I think the most realistic scenario, if the Vikings do move on from Radley Reef, is that Pat Elfline probably still remains at left guard. Now, that could be bad news for Ezra Cleveland because we know that tackles are uh, heavily influenced by um, the guard next to him. Uh, but no Reef means that Reef can't kick into left guard, which I, I was fine with as a compromise as long as they got Ezra Cleveland on the field as left tackle. Uh, but since incumbents are always favored, could mean that Pat Elfline just – remains <laughs> yeah, but but honestly if that is a trade-off for Ezra Cleveland starting at left tackle and getting rid of Riley Reef and freeing up 11 million cap space <sighs> okay okay but if uh Elfline is cheeks yet again or if he's starting to hinder uh, the growth of Ezra Cleveland yank his ass out of there he has to be on a short lease and also if Samia is your starting right guard and don't be afraid to pull Elfline and put Dozier in or Ole Udo or even Kyle Hinton or uh, consider re-signing Josh Klein which I think would be a perfectly fine um, um path as well but sort of getting ahead of ourselves so so could a reef trade or cut happen yes will it happen right now I think it's a little bit unlikely right now because if it does happen, I think it will happen closer to the start of the season where they've got Edward Cleveland in training camp, a couple preseason games. If he looks good to go, if he's squared away, then maybe they pull the trigger uh, because you know, the demand for Reef, I mean, there could be a couple of injuries uh, at tackles around the league. So maybe that the trade market even, get, even gets a little bit rosier on uh, Riley Reef, but I, I don't think they do it right now just because there's so many variables uh, and, and coaches are sort of conservative and superstitious by nature. But as you get closer and if Ezra Cleveland is showing up and showing out, maybe keep hope alive. The dream is there, but have a plan in place. So there you go. All right, your thoughts. Cutting, trading, Riley Reef. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. We'll support the work pull us on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.